Plummer here welcoming you to another episode of IWC Aftershock. We're coming to you from our brand new studio, the Aftershock Studios, and tonight we want to take a look back at Mountain State Madness 3 featuring the homecoming of Zima Ion, the TNA X Division Champion, as he defeated Sanjay Dutt. We're also going to take a look ahead at things that come in the IWC, but first we want to start off with one of the biggest happenings of the night in Mountain State Madness, because as we all know, Team Big League has had some confrontation with Justin Idol, HG Cannon, and especially Dalton Castle. Mountain State Madness 3, it all came to a head in a six-man tag team match in which Dalton Castle's team came out on top. Now, in the spirit of giving, the IWC wanted to give one of the special fans a $200 cash prize following the match. We took to the ring for the raffle and... We didn't notice that one disgruntled member of Team Big League was still on the outside. Well, he made his way to the ring and things got interesting. If you were at the event you saw, we're going to play that back. But aftershock cameras were also rolling after that event. So let's take a look at what took place inside the arena and the special aftershock footage of what took place outside. Oh! Whoa! Hey! Listen, Marshall! Listen to me. Hey, I've suspended you more than anybody in this company. You put your hands on this man, I guarantee I suspend you again. So don't even think about it. Guarantee. Now get out of the ring. You didn't let me finish. Because if you put your hands on Billy, you're suspended, but if you put your hands on me, you're getting arrested. Police, let's go. Let's get him out. Oh, it is for you. Uh, pressing charges, assault of a non-performer. I'm a promoter, I'm not licensed to wrestle. You can't put your hands on me. Billy, I think he touched your arm. You, you, you want to, guilty by association if you want to go. Now get to the back. I'm standing right here. They aren't going anywhere. Marshall Gambino goes to jail. More on that later at IWCWrestling.com. And if you want to see the fallout with Justin Idol, HD Cannon, and John McChesney, you want to check out the website as well. All of the updates are posted there. As for Dalton Castle, well, he's got a guaranteed title shot October 20th against the winner of the heavyweight title match later on in the night between heavy metal Gia's Logan Shulo and founding father's member Dennis Gregory. A little more on that later, because right now, we're going to talk about another man who was a little bit down on his luck, a little bit grumpy at Mount State Madness, and that's James Nutter. Because you see, heading into October 20th, he's got a match against Aiden Vale. In that match, if he wins, he's got a contract, he's in. He loses, he's gone. In Mount State Madness, he took on Jordan Lennox. He wasn't a happy capper following that match. Let's take a look at what James Nutter had to say. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Plummer here with James Nutter, a man who, on October 20th, well, you're going to be facing Aiden Vale for your contract here with the IWC, but you're riding a little bit of a losing streak headed into No Excuses. It's funny that you call it a losing streak, but if I do recall, last month, I'm the one that walked out and Aiden Vale was laid out on the mat. True. And if I remember tonight, I believe no one remembers that Jordan Lennox's hand was raised because I wrapped a steel chair around his spine. I walked out on my own two feet, and that defines a winner in my book. In my book, my story is America's next great success story. Aiden, I'm putting the final details into our chapter because it's gone on entirely too long. Next month is as simple as this. Just like the last two months, you'll be laying on your back disappointing all your fans, and I'll be walking out on my own two feet with an IWC contract. Now, speaking of losing streaks, you gotta take a look at the Super Indy title pitcher and the top two contenders, because Michael Fassad came in to Mountain State Madness 3 coming off a tough loss in a weapons cage match. Rich Swan came into Mountain State Madness 3 coming off a loss to Super Indy champion himself, Sammy Callahan. Now these two went one-on-one -on -one with huge implications. The winner certainly guaranteed a title shot at some point against Sammy Callahan. Well, as the match progressed, we saw that Rich Swan was able to come out on top of Michael Facade. And I caught up with him afterwards, breaking the news of the big match set for the Super Indy title on October 20th. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Plummer in the locker room following Mountain State Madness. I'm here with Rich Swan. Rich, can I get a minute? You want a minute? Just one minute? I got big news. Just spoke with Chuck Roberts, and it's official. October 20th, it's going to be you versus Sammy Callahan for the IWC Super Indy title. But that's not all. It's going to be a triple threat because Michael the Bomber Facade, he's going to get the shot too. Facade? Yeah. Facade? I just beat Facade here in West Virginia. I just beat him. And Sammy Callahan, last time, it was a fluke. A fluke. A fluke. Super Indy title. No excuses. Oh, you got a little bit of dip spit in your eye. Oh, I'm sorry. I really don't care. It's my time. I am the Indies, and I'm super, so I deserve the title. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Rich Swan, one of your number one contenders, super indie title. So Rich Swan, understandably frustrated that he has to share his title shot with a man he just beat. That's good for us, because we get to see one heck of a three-way dance for the IWC Super Indy title at no excuses. Now, that's not the only title picture we want to focus on, because there was a tag team title match at Mountain State Madness 3, in which the one-nighters got a rematch against the Founding Fathers and attempt to get their titles back. Sorgatron Media was kind enough to lend us some footage. Let's take a few quick highlights of that match and see who came out on top as your IWC Tag Team Champions. So the Founding Fathers continuing to stay on top of the Tag Team Title Division. They said they never lost them. They said they're here to save the Tag Title Division. We'll see how it plays out because these men, the three of them, they've been picking and choosing who actually wrestles, who actually defends those titles. But on October 20th at No Excuses, all three men will be defending the Tag Team Titles against the team of Blue Collar Slaughterhouse and their good friend David R. Demira. Yes, it's going to be a six-man tag, three on three, with the Tag Team Titles on the line. First ever in IWC. But speaking of the Founding Fathers, that wasn't all they were up to that night because Dennis Gregory, he was going for his sixth IWC World Heavyweight title reign as he challenged heavyweight champion Logan Shulo. After the dust settled, after everything was said and done, the heavy metal Jesus reigned supreme, held the title in the air, but it didn't end there because the Founding Fathers rushed ring tried to get revenge for Dennis Gregory's defeat. That's when Dalton Castle made the save, came face-to-face -face with Logan Shulo. It was official. 
the heavyweight champion Logan Shulo, the number one contender Dalton Castle, set for a collision course. No excuses on October 20th. But they were left in the ring face to face. Let's take a look at that encounter. Because as you saw, the champion, the challenger, a lot of tension, although a lot of respect, headed into October 20th for their big title bout. It's going to be incredible. I hope to see you there. Check out our website throughout the month for updates on the existing matches for no excuses, added matches, and we may even have an update on Marshall Gambito's comfy stay in prison. Unfortunately, folks, we are now all out of time. Thank you for joining us. And as always, if you're still with us, you just survived the aftershock.